Good afternoon. Um, welcome to the Adobe booth. Um, my name is Peter Essany, and I'm going to talk about a few things that we did on uh, Ghost in the Shell, the film that was released uh, this March. Um, so I work for a company called Territory Studio, and I work as a creative lead and visual effects supervisor. And Territory Studio is a studio based in London. Um, the studio was founded back in 2010, and since then we grew quite considerably. Now we have 60 employees uh, on five floors, we just moved recently. We have an office in San Francisco and in New York as well. I wanted to show you some of the films that we worked on. We um, usually do usual um, user interfaces designed for uh, screens, for, for movies and television. And um, quite often we work before the shooting starts. So we create the designs, create the concepts, and then it gets taken on set and I shoot the film. And um, hopefully everyone likes it. On Ghost in the Shell, it was a slightly different story because we got involved when uh, the film was already in the box. So the task that we got was to come up with ideas for how holographic technology in the world of Ghost in the Shell works. Uh, we did quite a few temp shots, which are little narrative helps for uh, fine tuning the edit of the film. And then we created assets in the city. Some of these could be seen here. Um, which were like 3D objects which we sent over to another vendor. So I think the original Ghost in the Shell film and the comic books, I, I, personally for me, they were such a big inspiration that when you get an opportunity to work on something like this, you try to do your best. And um, hopefully we did that. And just to illustrate the concept, here's a little cross-section of the work we did. Thank you very much. Um, so the main reason why we are here is we quite heavily use Adobe pro products, mainly After Effects, Photoshop, and Illustrator when we are creating concepts for a job like this. Um, and it usually starts with a phone call when we talk about the ideas. We talk to the visual effects supervisor, the visual effects producer, sometimes the director, and we we get a brief on what they expect from us. And that's, 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 the, that's the good part. The bad part is that usually we are really, really um, having just a short amount of time to do these kind of things. So it's extremely important for us to be able to react to changes quickly, to iterate through ideas very, very quickly. Um, and I'll show you a few examples how we did that. The first part of the brief that we got was to create something for this piece of technology called the Hologlobe. Um, the Hologlobe is a device that can be used to communicate with other people, to play back uh, videos of past things, uh, to bring up data, to investigate things, to create connections between uh, different things. So 
for us creatives, it's a, it's a really good opportunity to flex the creative muscles a bit and come up with various uh, ideas. And the way we do it usually starts with this. These are little sketches I personally did um, whilst we were having these meetings. And this just shows you that this is the speed that we have to work with. So we get a sketch on a meeting at nine o'clock and then if we can get something in front of the client in the afternoon, that's always really, really well received because in a big film like this, it needs to go through so many people that by the time it gets to the last one who makes the decision, it's usually quite late to change things. So it's, it's always good to get up to speed very, very quickly. So I'm going to take you through the concepts that we did. I'm going to show you how it looks in After Effects. Um, this was the first concept that we did, did for the Hollow Globe. Um, a lovely artist called Stylo helped us with these kind of things. Um, and it's based on these very beautiful Japanese uh, ornamental uh, pattern called the Asanoha pattern, which can be seen on that globe. We used quite a lot of particles. We, we tried to come up with something that looks unique and everything was based on how the production design uh, created the idea of the hologlobe. It had uh, a, a physical dish-like device that was used on set. So physically, we were tied into that kind of concept. We added quite a few um, UI-like elements, which is, which is quite, that, that relates back to what we do usually. So we created a library of these kind of things in Illustrator. Uh, we created a camera in After Effects. Uh, in Cinema 4D, brought it into After Effects, After Effects, and we were able to populate this world very quickly. Um, then we took this concept a little bit further. This was called the digital sand. Um, and the idea was that the physical boundaries of the hologlobe, which are not necessarily spherical, are containing charged particles. And these particles could write out anything in front of you. So basically, it's a very flexible device that creates lovely, quite analog looking uh, images because that was very um, early on quite clear to us that um, Rupert Sanders and Guillaume Rochon, the uh, visual effects supervisor, they don't necessarily want to have high tech technology. They don't want to see Iron Man like things. They don't want to see people poking in the air. They wanted to see something that, that's more down to earth whilst being futuristic. And we really thought that something like this could uh, be the idea. Here's a lovely close up of how the hologram concept looked like. Then we took it a step further and um, started to create a version of the digital sand, which was more voxel based. Um, I think that was around the time when production decided to move into more, uh, more into a voxel based kind of like look. So we used what we learned in the previous version and we started to populate the world with these voxel based things, adding lots of UI. And what we do in this phase is we usually create these images. Um, very quickly and we send it to the production and hopefully if they like it then we can take it into animation and hopefully uh, a step further. So here's a little breakdown that shows you how this is built up, how an image like this is built up. And this is what I'm going to show you how it looks uh, in After Effects. Before we go there, just let me do this little trick that we did yesterday. So yes, this is how it looks in After Effects. Um, it's going to be a little bit awkward because I have to move the mouse from here to there, but I do my best. Kind of like tricky to do a bit of a hand-eye coordination here. So we got a backplate, right? And then we use Cinema 4D to render out various passes. We just, we just do textures, we just do particles, we do different shaders. We render out everything that we can think of. Not thinking about whether that's going to be useful or not, just to have lots of variation in, in, in what we have at di our disposal. So we start layering these things up, right? You know, this ship thing, that's the first layer. That's a, that's a texture that we created on, um, on that ship geometry. And then we start adding things in After Effects itself. We added a bit of a, you know, these are solids. We just create masks around it and start to play with uh, transfer modes and feathering these edges out a bit and creating color variations. So if you go further, you see it's another bunch of renders coming from Cinema 4D. And then we started to add the sea, right? So that's another few layers here and there. I'm going to show you how many we have at the end. And we just start adding these things. Another layer 
comes in from Cinema 4D, we play with the colors, we play with blurs and, and, and all sorts of ideas, and, and we start adding the UI elements. And finally, we get something like this, right? So what I'm going to show you is this is how it looks like. And these are very ordinary, basic renders coming from cinema. And it's just, let's have an orange solid. Let's use the cinema render as a mask. And let's see how it looks like. Does it look good? Yeah, let's, let's do another one. Let's color it differently. And then we quite early get to a stage which we like. And, and, and so we use After Effects as a creative tool. That's all I really want to say. Um, we don't necessarily use it all the time as a compositing software. We use it as an extension of the, the creative ideas that we want to convey. So if you go back to the presentation just a bit, the way it works, it needs to be like this. Lovely. So the second part of the concept work that we did was the conference room. And um, if you've seen the original anime, the conference room was quite an important narrative moment. And one thing that's really important for us, whatever we do, no matter how pretty images we create or how nice we think they are, we always have to help the director to tell the story. We have to help the narrative. So the brief on this one was to create holographic looks for these dead Yakuza people. And at one point, that's going to be um, shown in this conference room, and section nine is going to make decisions based on these holograms. So we started to, we did exactly the same that we did previously, which was just started to render things. And we started to create variations. And quite a few of these images use very similar elements or the same elements. We just you know, if you, if you create a mask here on an element and you color it differently, it, it's, it's already a, a second look for almost like free. Um, and we really love that. Again, a different variation, just layering these things up. So this little breakdown shows you the different layers that we used and how it builds up. And you see some of these are quite similar in an early phase. But this whole exploratory phase really allows the designers to, to be really creative. And with very simple, basic things, you can build up really nice complexity, which is always really well received. Um, this is the conference room. The, the images that you saw earlier, we started to put it into context. So this is, the, this is a render of the conference room, and we started to layer these up. And that was the final concept that we created for this. I think the colors were slightly different, but this gives you an idea. And this one here pretty much shows you how a render pass could look like. This is animated, but just imagine a frame of this. Uh, it's not really super complex. It's, it's very basic. And being able to use these simple uh, shapes and renders creatively is, is excellent. This, was, this is a little breakdown that shows how we use different methods to write out these characters. Again, particles. Some of these are layered in After Effects. Some of these are straight from uh, cinema. So yeah, um, what I wanted to show you at this point is the way we use After Effects. When we go back to that, um, let me just very quickly try to bring the mouse back. And uh, is this the file, right? No, that's the Apple menu. No, that's the file menu. I'm going to find it. Lovely. So what we see here, that was, um, you saw these early voxel-based tests that we did. And, um, one of the characters was called Dr. Osmond, and one of the tasks was to create a voxel-based version of Dr. Osmond's head. And this is how we did it. Um, again, I just wanted to bring this in to show you how we layer these things up. And um, what I'm going to show you after that is going to be really interesting, because um, that shows the versatility of uh, After Effects. So let it render. It renders pretty fast, because it doesn't use any 
I don't think we use any effects on this. It's just straight renders layered on one another. Uh, and that gives you a really nice speed advantage. So let's see how it looks. Lovely. So when we see something like this, and we're really happy with it, there's always the question of how we integrate this into the pipeline. When we render it out, we have to send it to the client. And when we send it to the client, the clients, especially big firm clients, expect things to, to be done in a certain way. And that means you have to slate these kind of renders. You have to put them into the right color space. You have to create burnings. You have to use the right codec. So you can't really just present this, because no matter how good it looks, they're not going to accept it because it doesn't conform to their editing pipeline. So one of the things that we uh, did for Ghost in the Shell was to create a little tool that was called the uh, Territory Slate tool. And um, am I on the renders? Yeah, that's the render. So what happens here is when we render something out, we go here, we have a little script, which is the Territory Slate Maker. You can choose the show Ghost in the Shell. You can change certain parameters. You can add little notes. You can see where the frames should start from. Usually in films, it starts on 1001. And then you build a slate. And then it says complete. So what happens here is it created a nicely slated version of this render uh, in the render queue. So when you check it out, this is how it looks. It creates all these information based on the file name. Uh, it creates proper usable slate that conforms to a certain pipeline. So when you render this, you're going to have all these inf extra pieces of information at the top and the bottom. Uh, so this pretty much shows that when you work on a project like this uh, with After Effects, it's really excellent to, to be able to create these extra little tools and, and uh, speed up your pipeline. Um, and last but not least, this is a very important thing here. I wanted to say thank to the artists who worked on this show and the um, production team. It pretty much shows that we, we are a pretty small studio compared to the big ones, but um, yeah, it takes quite a few people to get there. And, um, it's always easy to forget how many people work their bums off to create something like this. And I'm personally really um, grateful for them. And I think this is their moment to shine. So thank you very much once again. If you have any questions, I'm really happy to answer them. I'm going to be around there. Uh, thanks for coming.